Hello everybody and welcome to my overhauled mod guide for Rimmefella. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to strike oil, craft wonderful things and make some napalm. As usual, you will find timestamps in the description box below and if there's any specific topic just check it out. Like I already mentioned, this is an overhauled guide so I already made an old video of that. So if there are other mods that you want to see me making videos of or other older videos of mine that need a rework by now, just let me know in the comment section below. All right, with that out of the way, let's get finally started. First off, all the necessary research is to be found in that tab. To actually drill for oil, well, the tech is already named like that, you just need that one. But you should really know that this tech alone doesn't give you anything except for oil. All the other technologies down there will allow you to refine that stuff and create all manner of pretty useful things. In the first part of this video, I want to focus on how to get that oil and how to set it up and what you need and all the prerequisites, basically. And then we're going to talk about how to work up with that stuff. I'm also going to explain how to set it up in this part of this video. Now, first things first, you will need a resource console somewhere around to actually to be able to actually be able to see oil. If you place down your oil wells here, you'll see here these patches. But if I'd be turning off my dev mode, let's do that because I'm working with dev modes for the sake of the tutorial, you'd see there is nothing to be seen. You'll need the resource console. As soon as the resource console is plugged in and alive, you'll have access to the visibility of these oil spots once you pick up an oil well on your cursor. There's a difference between oil wells and deep oil wells. But that's pretty simply explained. The first one is just the, well, these deposits and the deep oil wells, as you see. They go for entirely different deposits and they also drill doubly as fast as a normal one. So you get double the amount of oil per day out of these. So, before you start drilling oil, you should make sure that you have a pretty decent backbone of power supply for your colony going. That's really pretty important because you might be able to produce a lot of power with that, but you need to kickstart that with a decent power foundation of your own. And oil refining takes a nice amount of energy. And the other thing is you should really have an opportunity to wall off the area where you want to do all the oil stuff because everything is freaking explosive like you should like you should guess and therefore really make sure that you have a nice and decent security perimeter around your oil business because it's quite vulnerable and raiders with missile launchers and the like can make a really bad day at your base just wanted to say that beforehand because once everything is set up it ain't that mobile anymore so you better make these plans before you start okay so with that out of the way, let's drop down one oil well. I'm using God mode here, so everything is instantaneously built. You just need to plop that down, and the number you see is the total amount of oil in liters that you can drill out of that spot. So as far as I've understood things, what the, each of these um, towers drills this entire patch. So to access this patch, I'd need a tower here. But if I'd be dropping down another tower here in the vicinity, it would just access the same patch. Now, the tower alone needs power. He doesn't do anything without power, so let's give him power. But as soon as that thing is powered up, you see the next issue. There's nothing happening because you need to actually drill for oil first. You need to put in steel pipe to make that happen, and then you need to put a pawn on there and make it work. It's just like any other of these uh, jobs where you need to work continuously. Here we go, here flounder, supervising drilling operation. This will take a while. You see here drilling process in person and setting up your oil well will take a while, but this is only necessary once. And once you've set it up successfully, it'll dish out oil constantly. So. That's just a necessary evil, as you see here. There's also the steel for the pipe deplenishing, so you, you'll need you'll need 
some extra steel once you have set it up. We're going to finish that now instantaneously via dev mode because, you know, I can do that. And now this thing consumes power, but really a minuscule amount, and produces 400 liters of oil per day. Now, that oil, I'd highly recommend it to store it in a oil storage, goes ultimately in a crude cracker. You can also skip the storage, but I'm personally a sucker for storing, for storaging things like that. It's up to you. It won't make any uh, bad, it doesn't make anything bad. Or it's not a bad thing if you just connect the cracker and the oil well together. But you should, you should, should just know that there is a certain amount of oil that can be pumped out per day. And as soon as you want to refine more than 400 liters per day, you'd need a backbone of these things. But that's really up to you. Now, the cracker goes there and it needs to be connected with pipe. As you already might have noticed, there's oil pipeline here in the menu. You just connect it with that. Pink stuff is oil pipeline. Now, the cracker also needs power because it won't do anything without power. Now, we got a crude cracker going. As you see here now, it's just unhappy though. That's because there is no tank for the exit connected. This thing can't do anything or you have a cam fuel storage attached to it. The cracker is quite simply transforming raw oil into cam fuel. That's what this thing does. So you connect these and the error is gone away. Now, the refinery on its own doesn't do anything without you providing an input from the resource console. So let's do this. We're going to set up a little building here right next to this. How you set up your oil business is all up to you. I just wanted to mention that you should defend it. And we're going to set up this room here. Roof that, power that up. And then we're going to set up a refining business here. Refining and controlling this stuff well, the control console does not need to be in any way connected with this thing here. So you could easily place down the control console somewhere where your people can work comfortably at, because you'll spend a lot of time on this thing. So with a, with a console enabled, your people can now use the console to refine oil in, into camp fuel. You just right click prioritize operating and while your dude is now operating the crude cracker starts transforming 62 oil per hour into 31 fuel per hour and that stuff trickles here into the storage and that's the basics about chem fuel refining so to top off this topic you can increase the power on the crude cracker the more power you feed into this thing, the more, the more oil per hour uh, it can refine and the more fuel per hour it can dish out. That's pretty simply said a nice thing to keep the amount of crackers low. Usually you're fine with one cracker unless your colony is really stupidly big. Now, the last thing that I want to that I want to explain before I head over to the other topics in this video is how to use the resource console. So the resource console allows you to configure pretty much everything related to oil. We're going to focus for now into this area here with the global settings. The rest will come later. So up here you can tell the game how much oil should be produced and how much fuel should be produced. So this slider is the minimal amount that should be provided so if i'd say tell the game to have a 5 5.38 percent minimal amount then my dudes would fill this tank until it's the percentile amount and never would they ever use these five percent then because this is the minimal amount they'd only start using them as soon as i remove that check mark here and give it free this way you can build up some buffers if you'd want to and this slider here tells the dudes how much they should produce tops 
I'd highly recommend you to, pr to set up a maximum production value, because otherwise, I can only tell you, 10,000 liters of chem fuel take a lot of hours for refining. Refining is its own job, called resource, and you can assign it there. One last thing, whenever you change these limiters here, you'll have to uncheck and recheck that thing because that's the only way it refreshes the command. So for example, if I'd now be changing that slider like this, it wouldn't get this change until I do this. Really important to know, took me a while until I figured out why my changes were not processed. Okay, so that's the basics about oil making. Fine. So next chapter will be a pretty short one. I want to talk about how to make power out of oil. It's a very simple process. There's only two things worth mentioning. You'll need one of these chem fuel power plants. You'll place them down and then you'll hook them up with oil. Boom. And the chem fuel power plants produce quite substantial amounts of power. The large one comes with a whopping amount of 16,000 uh, watt and the smaller one comes with 4,000 watt. The problem about these dudes is they have a fuel usage per day, whether you use up the power or not. So they just run 24-7 eating up your fuel, but at the same, t at the same moment that this is what I meant with power supply. You need a decent power supply to get the cracker going, but as soon as you have these babies going, your your oil business practically carries itself. The only thing really important is that you're not running out of camp fuel in between. So that's really how easy it is to produce power with camp fuel. It just has that downside, like I mentioned, that you really need to take care that you don't suck your your deposits dry. There's certainly up and down sides for that. Okay, that was a short topic. Let's go on to the next one, which will be a lot longer. So chem fuel refining also allows you to produce synthylene, synthread, napalm, synthamide, and even down materials like plasteel and hyperweave and neutramines. That's going to be the next part. I'm going to explain how that works. This is all done by setting up these refiners. The refiners are basically machines that do the work for you. Let's start with the synthylene refiner. The synthylene refiner just must be plotted down somewhere. And as you see already by the pink lines there, it has to be connected to your oil supply. This thing can't work without oil. It's going to be entirely useless without oil. Once you've set up your refiners, you need to set up a unloading bay right next to them. Without the unloading bay, you won't be able to get any product out of them. So after that's been done, you get over to resource console and for each refiner you set up, you get a new option to get up a product here. So now let's do that. Synthylene. Let's tell our dude to make that. And as you see here, now there's blinky lights there. And now we made synthylene. This works like any other build that you know from your other tables. You can set up how often you might want to do this and or how you want to do this do until you have a certain amount and so on and so forth. This is pretty easily the same thing that you're always using. The mechanics here are now all the same for all these things. Napalm does the, behaves the same way like the synth thread. It must be set up and it must be connected to chem fuel. Otherwise, it won't work. Once it's once it's set up, you can just get a new put in a new work order here, and that's that. These are always the costs in chem fuel. Now. Beyond that, well, as you see here, there's a refiner for pretty much everything. Hyperweave and neutramines are really among the rarer and cooler things you can craft. And then there's also the, op the option to craft plasteel. And if I remember correctly, not sure now if Hyperweave had a little bit of a more complex uh, complexity there as well, but we're gonna get there. So for plasteel, you need the autoclave. 
This thing bakes uncured plasteel or synthamide composite into the products. So we're going to set that thing up. And here it is. The autoclave on its own can't do anything. What we now need is the fabrication bench, because that's where you actually create the other stuff. And at the fabrication bench, as soon as it's powered up, yeah, well. At the fabrication bench, you can now craft a couple of things. First off, I want to mention the synthaline components, so you can replace a pot of the steel with synthaline, which is pr practically just a simple different word for plastic. And here you can make plasteel and synthamide composite. So the synthamide composite and the plasteel, once they come out, they're going to be not finished yet. So, give me a sec. Do I have the necessary materials? I don't think so. Well, let's create them real quick. So, you'll craft your... your unfinished product there, and you'll finish it, then add the... at the autoclave. Another thing, well, it's a good moment to show that, you can directly extract chem fuel out of your tanks by using a chem fuel pump. You just smack that on and then it automatically extracts chem fuel for you. So let's see, do I have the necessary materials? I'm merely missing some synthaline. And there we go. Let's see, it's only a matter of time until somebody does that. And these refined goods then... Oh, let's create some uncured plasteel directly, that's easier. These unrefined goods then, here, go into the autoclave. And you need to check here whether the autoclave is supposed to make co uh, curing, cured plasteel or composite stuff there. and then it just goes in there. Yours 12 hours, and then you get plasteel out. It's a little bit of a more uh, lengthy process, but it's a lot of fun. So what I want to mention here while we're at the crafting part, before we're getting done with that, is that you can also craft a couple of things out of the machining table. So there's napalm can create that stuff either at the machining table or here at the refinery. That's basically a earlier way of making that. And what's also really, really worth mentioning is the fact that you can make not napalm shells. And that's just fun. So we're going to introduce the weaponized, the weapon options of that stuff in a second. Now, I just want to sum up the refining. This is pretty much all you need to know about refining chem fuel. You now know how to refine the stuff that's synthread and the like, and now you also know how to refine the more complicated things like plasteel and synthamide composite, because you just uh, use that at the autoclave. Beyond that, there is really not that much to know. The last part of this video will now be about creating more fun things like the, the weaponized uh, methods that you can do there. So you can make a napalm bomb and you can make a spark grid here as well. This is a pretty nifty thing. Just want to show you that because it's really cool. and the spark grid just ignites things, and that's the power of a napalm bomb, by the way. Napalm has this nasty, uh, this nasty thing that it keeps reigniting again and again and again, and that's, the, that's a really nasty thing. These spark grids, of course, you'll need to put them on a switch or something like that. As you've seen there, if you just... Uh, if you just put them on there, they'll not do anything on their own. You can also use them by just setting up a stockpile zone and put on a critical thing there to place something down there. 
but I'd always strongly recommend you to have a switch there which you'd flick if you want to ignite that thing. Everything else would be really not safe for your colonists. Here, power switch. Connect that with your spark grid and you're good to go. And of course, nothing is complete without showcasing some napalm shells as well. Napalm is really the, the most fascinating stuff combat-wise in this mod, but it doesn't do that much more for your for your combat um, experience, so to say. Rimmefeller is mostly the idea of setting up a lot of different refineries and making you autonomous from various different threats and that's or not various different threats and make you autonomous from various different needs and that's really the cool thing so let's uh, show you the napalm shell and that's where i'm going to outro this i hope you guys enjoyed that thing i really did enjoy the, making this video a lot and i hope you found it helpful drop me your comments down below as i said let me know if there's any other tutorials you want to see and let me know if there's any other questions or things worth mentioning about this mod Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily videos coming up from my side, and hundreds of them to browse on the channel. And if you check out the description box, you'll not only find the timestamps I was talking about, but also my Twitch channel, where I do stream quite regularly, my Discord channel, where you can find a fine community of people and have a chat with me, and of course, last but not least, ways to support this channel, because I will keep doing my content for free, and I can use any piece of support that I can get. Anywho, watching this video to this point already means a ton to me, and... I wish you a wonderful day and have some good time digging for uh, drilling for oil. See you there and have a good one.